Good morning everybody. Today we are going to be making a chatbot with Python. So the first thing you got to do is you got to go over to file. Now I'm using PyCharm so if you're using something else it'll be different. But in PyCharm you have to go to file and click new project. Then this little window will open up and you see that little blue box that's where you name your project so we're just gonna go ahead and name it chatbot give that a sec okay and now it will ask you in this window a new window that's because I already have a window open but otherwise it won't give you this option now it will take a while to load so one eternity later okay so finally this opened so first thing we gotta do is we gotta go over to that main project file and right click on it and we gotta select new and python file we're gonna name our python file uh, chatbot oh my god that's the wrong spelling uh, again okay so yeah chatbot now just wait for it it'll open why is it not responding okay so it open now what we have to do is we'll just start coding so the first step is we need to get some user input so we'll just name user input equals input input right and we can just prompt a question mark for now right after that what we have to do is we have to start using if statements okay now this is a very beginner tutorial there are some better ways to do this but first I will teach you using if statements so if statements work like this so we say if user input is equivalent to just say mm, hi right start out simple so what this says is always if statement will work if this given thing this given thing is true this sign is used for equivalency to check whether they are equal and while assigning you use this this equal sign that just means you are assigning that value to a variable but here is to check for equivalency now you see this little red mark here it's because we haven't written anything under this so we'll just write print hello right now if we run this right click chatbot and run chatbot so here it will come a small question mark which asks for the user input so we'll just write hi it will say hello and the process you'll see the process finished now if we want this to repeat we can just put it in an infinite loop you can just move this one step down select it tab it come up here and say while true now while loops also work something like if loops they only work only what is under them will work if this little statement is true we can also write like user input not equal to this so this also will work because this thing will evaluate to true as long as this user input is not empty so that time this will run right so but we'll just leave it for true we can code that bit later true right so now if we run this shift f10 to run once you've already pressed the first thing so now hi okay now this is not what we wanted this is because like uh, stop this 
we did not put this user input inside here so it is while this is true and user input equals to high it will keep printing hello now when it asks for user input it will stop this while loop until you give it some input so what we'll do we'll just control shift down is a shortcut which you can use to move things one step down so now every loop it will ask you for the input and it will check whether your input matches something that you've already hard coded right so we'll do shift f10 again to run it say hi it will say hello and you'll get this question mark again now we also want the screen we also want this command thing to clear once okay so the correct one was os dot system clear right and we want this to happen after every time he asks a question and checks so we'll just put it at the top so what this will do is every time before it asks a question it will clear the input right or no actually i think we should put it here right now it will ask the thing clear what was there previously and then print the new one so now i'll just run and check stop and rerun say hi hello and clear is not recognized okay fine apparently for windows we have to use cls i'm on windows so that's what we're going to do shift f10 stop and rerun hi hello and what was that so we'll just say hi again see whether it no it didn't clear why not Okay, so apparently this only works when you have a separate window that runs this. It will not work directly in PyCharm, but just know that this works regularly. Okay, so then that little question mark is this thing in operation. So what we'll do here, we'll just stop this, and now we can add some more things. So we'll use l if user input. is equivalent to hello we can also print print hi right so now what this will do is it will check whether it's hi if it's hi then it will print hello if it is hello then it will print hi okay so we can run this and it will so suppose we type hi it will come hello and if we type hello it will come hi right so this is working now another thing what you can do to shorten this bit of code is you could just remove this and say if user input equals hi or user input is equivalent to hello then we print hello So now whether we type hi or hello it will print hello right now uh, also if you are using pycharm there's this handy little function if you do control alt l it formats the entire code properly right so now we'll run this and check so we'll type hi it should give us hello and even if we type hello it should give us hi hello uh, hello right so that worked so yeah now we'll use l if user input is equivalent to let's say add right then we can call the add function and now what this does we can do alt enter and create a function add this only works in pycharm So then, what we'll do in add, we'll ask for two numbers. So n one equals input 
F I R S T first number. Don't worry about the red box, that's nothing. And don't worry that this thing is grayed out, it's just because you haven't used it anywhere yet. Okay? So, first number, and we'll just put a space after that to make it look neat. Next one N2 equals input. Second number. So, space. And now we have to add both of these numbers. So then, print n1 plus n2, right? So now what this does is if you type add, it will call the add function. And the add function will, it will call this, this will call this function and uh, that will just trigger all the things happening in this now you don't necessarily have to make another function you could just put all of this code right here and it would work exactly the same but this just makes the code look neater now control alt l for the format and shift f10 stop and rerun okay now if we say hi say hello that still works and if we say add we can do first number two second number three oh, okay fine so why this didn't work is because uh, we just these are you are inputting strings over here right and this is just concatenating the strings so what we have to do is we can just put this in eval eval oh no int eval is usually a little dangerous to use unless you don't know what you're doing properly you c you might make something wrong happen with your system right so int is the safest way so now what this is doing is whatever number you're inputting it will convert that into an int right so now if we run this again, shift F10, stop and rerun, say add, first number 2, 3, 5, right? So that added it properly. Now like this, you can make an entire calculator proper inside this and just rename this to calculator and it would and rename this also here. So then it will work, it will call that function. Now, uh, this might lead to a lot of writing, right? And what we also want to do is we want to add a thing that if the thing does not exist, then we, re then we can let the user enter his own answer for it, right? But that all will be in part two. This much is enough for part one. And this is how to build a simple chatbot in Python. All you have to do after this is if you want to add more statements, we can just do L if user input is equivalent to, so what should we write here? We'll just say, mm, how are you doing? Or just how are you doing, right? So then, we will just print I am fine fine and like this this could go on for ages and you could just keep adding things but there is an easier way to do this where you can just let the user enter his own things if that uh, if this user input which he typed is not hard coded here then we could just let him enter his own answer and save that to a text file. But I'll be teaching you how to do that next time. This is enough for part one. Thank you and have a good day.